While out playing with her brothers and sister, eight-year-old Sarah Payne vanished. She had gotten upset and run into a cornfield. By the time her older brother got to the other side, he was met with an empty road and no sign of his sister. It turned out that a predator had been on the prowl that day, a man who had previously been convicted of the abduction and assault of another eight-year-old girl five years prior. Sarah Evelyn Isabel Payne was born on the 13th of October 1991 to parents Michael and Sarah Payne. She lived in Hersham, Surrey with her three siblings. During the summer of 2000, Sarah had been staying at her grandparents' home. It was a child's paradise, close to the beach with miles upon miles of land for the kids to explore and play in. It was nothing short of idyllic until everything came crashing down around them. On the evening of July 1st, 2000, Sarah was playing near a cornfield close to her grandfather's home in Kingston Gorse, West Sussex. She had been with her 13 and 11-year-old brothers and five-year-old younger sister. As soon as her oldest brother realized his sister was missing, he raced back to his grandfather's house for help. The police were quickly alerted and a search was launched. The news soon spread across the country and made national headlines. Alongside searches of the area, officers began to question local sex offenders the day after Sarah had disappeared. One person was arrested during this time, but they would later be released. Officers and volunteers left no stone unturned, while Sarah's parents made daily appeals on news stations in the hopes of helpful leads coming in. On July 10th, an announcement was made by police regarding information of a possible sighting of Sarah on the M6 motorway in Cheshire on July 2nd. It's unclear whether this was actually Sarah. The search for young Sarah would come to a tragic end on July 17th. A body was located in a field in West Sussex, approximately 15 miles or 24 kilometers from where Sarah had disappeared. The following day, the body was formally identified as belonging to Sarah Payne. The investigation now officially shifted from a search to a murder investigation. Three days after Sarah's body had been found, one of her shoes was recovered along a road in Coolham. Police believed it had likely been found by Sarah's murderer after they dumped her body and then thrown it out of a car window. This shoe would later prove very useful in the case's trial. Police had an idea of who they were looking for. Sarah's oldest brother had seen a scruffy looking man with yellowish teeth driving down the road on the evening that Sarah vanished in a white van. Other witnesses also came forward having seen a white van parked on the side of the road in the area. During the initial questioning of local sex offenders, a man had come onto the police's radar. That man was 41-year-old Roy Whiting, the same Roy Whiting who had been convicted of a similar crime back in 1995. On March 4th of that year, Roy abducted and sexually assaulted an eight-year-old girl in Langley Green, Crawley. Several weeks after the horrific crime, he was arrested after his car was linked to the abductor's car. Roy tried to cover his tracks by selling the vehicle, but it was tracked down. Once examined, a knife was even found inside that he had forgotten to get rid of. On June 23rd, Roy admitted to the charges of abduction and indecent assault and was handed a measly four-year sentence. In the end, he only served two years and five months of those four years. Shockingly, Roy Whiting was released early despite a psychiatrist who assessed him saying he was likely to re-offend once out. Police first questioned Roy on July 2nd, the day after Sarah disappeared. His Little Hampton flat was only five miles away from Kingston Gorse, and since he was known to authorities as a sex offender, he was a logical man to question. Officers had first turned up at his seafront home in the afternoon, but Roy was not at his residence. They returned that same evening and found Roy in the home. He was questioned for over an hour before the officers left. 
Not long after this meeting, Roy had tried to get into his van and drive off, but he was stopped by an undercover officer and arrested. He ended up spending two days in police custody, but since there was not yet any evidence tying him to Sarah's disappearance, he was released. Roy claimed he had been at a fun fair in Hove on the afternoon and early evening of July 1st before returning home in the evening. This story fell apart after a fuel receipt was found from a garage on the A24, not far from where Sarah's shoe had been found. Instead of keeping a low profile, Roy went on to steal a car and get into a high-speed chase with police on July the 23rd. He ended up crashing into a parked vehicle where he was subsequently arrested for dangerous driving. This charge led to him being handed a 22-month sentence which gave the authorities plenty of opportunity to search his home and belongings, such as his van, for evidence tying Roy to Sarah's disappearance and murder. After extensive forensic tests of his van and a police inquiry, Roy Whiting was charged with the abduction and murder of Sarah Payne on February the 6th, 2001. Roy Whiting appeared in front of the Lewis Crown Court on that same day. He pleaded not guilty to both charges and remained in custody until his trial began on November 14th. Several key witnesses presented evidence at the trial, one of which was Sarah's oldest brother. He told the court of the scruffy man he had seen on the evening his sister disappeared, though he hadn't been able to pick Roy in an identity parade. Two other witnesses explained how they had seen a white van parked along the road near where Sarah was playing on July 1st. The court also heard of how the shoe of Sarah's that was found had fibres on it that matched fibres from Roy's van, as well as a blonde hair found in his van that had a one in a billion chance of belonging to someone other than Sarah. The trial lasted four weeks before the jury and Mr. Justice Curtis reached their verdict. Roy Whiting was convicted of the abduction and murder of Sarah Payne. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. Speaking to the court, Justice Curtis said that this was one of the rare cases that a life sentence should mean life. After the conviction, Whiting's prior criminal history was made public knowledge. There was good reason for this having been withheld as there was a real concern of media and public bias being used as an excuse for Roy to overturn his conviction in the future. And while, yes, Roy was now successfully put behind bars for what he had done, when the public found out about his past crimes, there was understandable outrage. How had a man been able to abduct and assault a little girl just to get out of prison before even serving his full sentence? Surely Sarah's murder could have been avoided if Roy had actually been monitored. Seeing the public's reaction, the News of the World published a front-page article naming 50 sex offenders and promising to reveal more. This then led to vigilante groups forming trying to squash these people out. The problem with this was there were far too many cases of mistaken identity, where people who had the same names of these sex offenders were targeted despite being completely innocent. There was some good that came out of this whole ordeal thanks to Sarah's parents. They wanted to protect other children from their daughter's fate by campaigning for law changes that gave the public the right to find out about any sex offenders that lived in their area. It was a long fight, but finally in 2011, the law was put in place in England and Wales it was aptly named Sarah's Law. Roy Whiting will only be eligible for release in 2041, when he will be 82 years old. His time in prison has been unpleasant, to put it lightly, where he has suffered from multiple attacks by other prisoners after they found out what he had done. <laughs>